Hello, my name is Jeff Hajek. I'm the founder of Alaction Continuous Improvement. Welcome to our brief presentation on using the Kaizen process to solve problems. This short video comes from our PowerPoint package, Problem Solving with the Kaizen Process and Demac. So let's get one thing out of the way right off the bat. You might be thinking that the title of this class is a bit unwieldy. Let's take a step back though and think about the most common forms of problem solving. DMAIC is the acronym used for Six Sigma. You may also hear this pronounced DMAIC. 8D or 8 Disciplines and PDCA are also both common problem solving methods. And of course we have the other star of this presentation, Kaizen. Each of these is a structured approach to solving a problem. Before we move on, I'd like to point out the SG3 icon at the bottom of the screen. Because our training is modular, you can purchase a student guide to go along with the PowerPoint presentation. These icons call attention to places where trainees can take notes. Now let's take a look at the problem solving steps in more detail. DMAIC stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, Control. You'll notice that each of these methods has a great deal of overlap. The charting process of a Kaizen, for example, is similar to the defined step in DMAIC. While 8D breaks this step into a few smaller ones, combined they match up nicely to the defined step. 8D is a bit unique in that it specifically calls for the containment of a problem. This is a stopgap approach, or a temporary fix. But this step is generally done in each of the other methods, despite not being explicitly listed in the process. As you look through the rest of the 8D steps, you'll notice that they align fairly closely to those of the DMAIC process, as do those of the PDCA or Deming cycle. The difference with the Kaizen process, though, is that it does not have a universally accepted set of steps. Most Kaizen processes, though, loosely follow the same steps as DMAIC. You'll often find a team starting off with a process walk, which is similar to the measure step. The team members then look for the root causes of the problems and the waste that they identify. This is followed by actively making changes to improve the process and then creating a plan to sustain and audit the gains. Finally, most Kaizen teams celebrate the conclusion of the event with a report out. As you can see from this matrix, there's a lot of overlap in the steps of the processes. So, because the DMAIC steps are already familiar to many people, and because it's an easy acronym to remember, it is a useful way to frame the Kaizen process, hence the title of the PowerPoint class that these graphics come from. And speaking of process, it is important to recognize that problem solving is, in fact, a process. And the way that process is applied depends on a few factors. Generally speaking, a problem can be looked at as sitting somewhere on a grid. One axis shows the complexity of a problem, and the other shows the risk associated with it. For example, a simple, low-risk problem might be selecting a particular food at a grocery store. For clarification, I often describe a problem as being a gap between what should be and what is. In this case, you should have a brand selected to purchase, and you currently do not. A more complex but higher-risk problem would be cooking a souffle. It is easy to make a mistake and have it turn out poorly. Blackjack is a high-risk problem. In framing this problem, the current state is that you have X dollars, and the desired state is that you have more than X dollars. Despite the risk, though, the game is pretty simple. Deciding where to build a factory would be an example of a high-risk, complex problem. So the further up and to the right the problem lies, the more structured of a problem-solving approach you will need to take. So let's break this grid into sections. Each section requires a bit more effort. For example, you would be unlikely to go through an 8D or full Kaizen process just to pick out that box of cookies or to make a quick daily improvement. The next layer of problem complexity or risk, though, likely requires a loosely structured problem-solving effort. And as the problem gets even more difficult to solve, you might see a structured approach with some shortcuts applied. But as problems start to reach the complicated risky quadrant, you'll want to use a formal process. Most week-long Kaizen projects fall into this category. I don't recommend skipping steps when planning and conducting a Kaizen, though. Your team is investing a lot of time, and the opportunity cost of what they could be doing if they weren't on a team is huge. Mistakes, even if it just results in wasted time, can be costly. 
As you gain experience, the lines will shift further to the right. What this means is that you will be intuitively doing some of the steps without needing to formally write out the process. I do want to warn you though, don't skip steps on projects until you have a proven track record of success. And avoid doing it at all on complicated ones. The effort the problem solving process requires is far less than the effort you'll probably face trying to fix issues if you come up with a poor solution. So, how does this problem solving process look in a Kaizen event? Well, about a month out, you'll want to start the planning process. This will include creating a charter, which will likely take some data collection. I'd like to mention here that we do offer full Kaizen facilitation support, but we can also help you run more effective Kaizens on your own with our remote consulting and lean support services. We can help you review your charter, set up a data collection plan, and even run an online survey prior to your event. Contact us at info at valaction.com or check our website for more details. When the planning is done and the event week starts, the first day is often reserved for training and is soon followed by a process walk where detailed data is collected. This is the equivalent of the measure step. That information is soon analyzed and the improvements are planned in the form of a future state process. The bulk of a Kaizen event, though, is spent on improving the processes. Make sure, though, that you feel free to go back to the measure and analyze steps if needed. Finally, you will complete an audit plan and do follow-up activities to sustain the project. So as you can see, the Kaizen event process is simply a method of problem solving. Remember the definition I gave of problem earlier? It is simply a condition where the current state does not match the desired state. Isn't that exactly what a Kaizen event does? Is a project designed specifically to change from the current state to a more desirable one? To help you get started in your Kaizen efforts, we offer many free forms on our website at valaction.com. These include our Kaizen Charter and Checklist to help you plan your Kaizen, our Kaizen Newspaper to get things done effectively, and our Kaizen Audit Form to make sure that the changes you make stick. So that's all for this video. Remember, these three slides are only a few from our Problem Solving with Kaizen and Demaic PowerPoint training package. You can purchase an optional student guide that you can distribute to your teams and you can also get additional modules covering each of these five steps in detail. Learn more by clicking Lean Training from the menu options on our website at Valaction.com. Again, I am Jeff Hajek, the founder of Valaction. I encourage you to look around our site and see all that we have to offer you. If you like what you see, you can sign up for a monthly newsletter so you don't miss anything new. Until next time, best wishes on your lean journey.